Hey there, I'm Emma Perk, and I'm here to present Building the Foundations. This is video two of a video series that Lisa Wilson Becho and I created on creating one page reports. We do encourage you to check out all of our videos, including video one, which introduces the one page reports, and those can be found on our website, evaluate.org. So, this video is going to be walking through the steps one through three of creating a one page report. And we've created a handout that's available for download on our website, along with a worksheet that actually gives you both the, the description of what we're asking you to do, and then provides you with some blanks to fill in information as you go. And we find this to be a really great tool for when you're trying to create a one-page report. So the first step in creating a one-page report is identifying the audience. And when we're talking about the audience here, we're actually talking about that group that you're trying to target with this one-page report. And we challenge you to actually identify this into group two groups, both the primary audience and then a secondary audience. So for an example of a primary audience, perhaps you're building a one page report to give information about your program. So that could be your college administrators, maybe you're trying to give them more information about to get increased funding, or it could be the greater community. You're trying to get, provide outreach on your project to encourage more participation. But you also want to think about that secondary audience. For our project, we're funded by the National Science Foundation. So something that we always keep in mind when we're producing anything is that the National Science Foundation serves as a secondary audience, and therefore information on our report should also be understandable to that audience. So the next step is identifying the purpose. So this is very similar to writing a purpose statement for a project or a business. And we encourage you to do this just like you would write a mission statement. So to start out, we have a very basic description here. So provide a visual executive summary. That's a fine purpose statement, but the problem is, is the scope may be a little too big for our purposes. So we encourage you to dig in and to provide a more descriptive purpose statement. So here's another one. To present an evaluative summary of what activities the project is doing and the strengths and achievements the project has made. Now you can really see that we're digging in to not only an evaluative summary of the project, but also what activities the project is doing and the strengths and achievements. Now that's something we can work with and it will help prevent us from going down rabbit holes and trying to put extra information that the audience doesn't need. And that's the whole idea of our purpose statement. But as I mentioned, we don't want a purpose statement that's too big, like a visual executive summary or a visual report but we also don't want to make it too small where we're only focusing on one data point that may not be helpful to our audience. So we want to keep all those things in mind when thinking about our purpose statement. We want to find the right balance that's not too big, not too small. So the third step we're going to walk through in this video is prioritizing the information. And for this, I'm going to hop over to an example by Cole Knopfluck and her book, Storytelling with Data. So in Cole's book, she describes a story about a researcher. And as a researcher, the researcher collected a lot of data. So here's all of our data, but there were three meaningful pieces of data in there. But as you can see, there's a lot of oysters to look for. So now you can see that I'm calling attention to our three meaningful pieces of data, but they're still buried. And I can take those three meaningful pieces along with the rest of our research data and put it all in the report because we want to make sure that our findings are heard. But the problem is, is our meaningful pieces of data are buried. We could try to bold them or provide some visual hierarchy to try to call them out. But again, the information is still getting buried by the rest of the information on the page. So what if we just took those three pieces and put them on a one page report? Now our meaningful data is easily called out and very visual to our audience. So keep in mind your audience when thinking about that, right? So it's not only about identifying the audience, but using that to help prioritize the information for your one page report. Examples of what you might want to include on a one page report based on our audience that we identified earlier could be the project's mission. Again, you will have an audience that's maybe the greater community. They may not have great familiarity with your project. So providing that mission may help zoom them in to understand the data you're trying to communicate. Also, you could include your goals of your project, possibly the quality of the program or the utility of the program. 
And then for the header information, you always want to include the institution's logo, the date the report was created, and also the title for the one-page report. And then the footer, we encourage you to think about adding the author credit, data source, so where the original data came from, and then also any funding information that needs to be on there. So that's actually it for this video, but we do encourage you to continue in the series and check out video three, Visual Strategies. Thanks so much.